Hello, welcome back to the show. Uh, I did promise a two-parter uh, and also a two-part guest slot for part two because joining Colin Walker, the former Sheffield Wednesday, Barnsley and everywhere else, including New Zealand uh, striker, ex-bin man, we've got a long-distance lorry driver in the studio who uh, follows Sheffield Wednesday just about everywhere. And uh, considering that, he's looking quite well. Uh, Ro <laughs> Ro Roger Burkett, nice to, <laughs> nice to meet you. Uh, and he's here courtesy of his pal and my pal, Keith Edwards of Sheffield United Persuasion. What, what's he doing befriending a, a Wednesday night there, well, hey, Roger? He came, to, uh, he came for an interview for a job a few years ago. And uh, he asked me, uh, do you know who I am? And, and I was thinking, yeah, but no, no, I don't know who you are. You didn't say that to Keith, did you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, knew, I knew exactly who he was. But oh, he's, you he, Yeah, he's one of the guys that, if you turn around to Keith Edwards and say, oh, yeah, Keith, Keith, in, oh, 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 oh. So you have to keep him on his, keep him on his toes and just keep telling him that you don't know who he is and uh, <laughs> <laughs> Keith though you're you're in fact Keith's boss no he, he didn't tell me that bit you are yeah. Keith's boss okay he, he is a nightmare he's a nightmare but we'll not go into too many details I'd rather you did no no he's, he's, a, he's a great bloke to be honest yeah. he's Keith the only problem is he never signed for Sheffield Wednesday when Sheffield Wednesday came knocking on the door if he'd have signed for Sheffield Wednesday I'd have even liked him a lot more <laughs> did, might they, have... did they come knocking on the door because I didn't the, know about the that. story was that uh, at one stage um, I think it was Jack Charlton in the 70s wanted Keith to sign for Wednesday and uh, from Hull no, I think yeah. it was from United. From United, right. And, well, and it were in the days that nobody ever signed from Wednesday to United and yeah, went well, and vice versa. Well, they did, though. Terry Curran went. Uh, yeah, well, that was a few years later. Yeah. At this time, in the 70s, there the, 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 the was a lot. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, he, he, keeps a lot. That, he keeps that story quiet. Yeah, you uh, are, next time he comes on, yeah. just ask him about yeah. that. Yeah. But I, you know, I've been told not to talk about Keith. Well, the yeah. last thing you want to do is talk about Keith when he's, when yeah, when let's he's get, on. Let's get off the subject. Yeah, uh, Keith, yeah, I could talk about Colin, it all now. Um, you know, one striker to another. I mean, Keith was just unbelievable. Well, he was playing for Sheffield. We're talking about Keith, sorry. He was talking about, he was uh, Sheffield United junior captain at the same time I played for Barnsley juniors. Uh -huh. uh, and even at that time, he was a prolific goal scorer. You could never, ever take your mind off Keith Edwards. He was always in the game, whether you could hear him all the time. But, but by, by, did he, was he lethal? In the 18 yard ball, he was fantastic. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And his second. career, we talked about earlier, his career is second to none. Yeah. He'll tell you that as well. Yeah, he will. He'll tell you every day. Yeah. He'll <laughs> tell you every yeah. day. This business, we're going to come on to Sheffield Wednesday and your thoughts, but uh, you, you're a man of the road. Where have you been today? You've been up and down? Uh, no, actually, to be honest, now I. Off. No, I work in the office. Now I tell Keith what to do and tell right. Keith what to where, where to, to go, go and do. Tell uh, Keith where to go. That's tell, a brilliant I tell, job. I tell Keith and well, I, it, the thing is, when United have done well, yeah, um, I send him to the, some of the worst places you could possibly. <laughs> I know all the bad sites. I know all the bad drops. So I keep sending Keith there every <laughs> time deliberately. So that's for one thing for Sheffield Wednesday fans. I do get my own back on the United legend every now and then, <laughs> as but, much as possible. But 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 you get to some pretty awful places as well, don't you? Especially, I mean, it's an awful place if the result's bad. And you're, you're travelling all over the place watching yeah, that. Yeah, no, I mean, we... I mean, we, you, you have been for years. I've, I've been going down to watch Wednesday play. I first started... But you go to the away games. Oh, I've been going to the home games and away games since very early 70s, late 60s. Um, I've, I miss, I've probably missed 10 home games in the last 40 years. Yeah. And away games, I, I try to get to every away game. Uh, it's getting hard. It's getting really hard. What, to, to oh, get there or to, or to... Just to watch them play. It's never been as easy to get to the games, but to watch them play recently and the atmosphere in the crowd. Uh, we used to pride ourselves on making a lot of noise at away games. We, 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 you, but you need the help of the players to do that. And we're not getting the help of the players anymore. It's really difficult. I can count on, well, I mean, we went away at Queen's Park Rangers. We got behind the team. We didn't expect to win down at Queen's Park Rangers. In the FA Cup. Yes, yeah. Queen's Park Rangers were on a roll. We went to Brighton. We had a good day out. We didn't expect anything at Brighton. Uh, 
but the games we were expecting to do well in, yeah. Bright, uh, Barnsley at the weekend, I didn't know one before I had to look at the programme to find out who were playing for Barnsley. I never even heard of any of the players. And we've got all these so-called superstars coming in and we were second best to every ball. We're not winning second balls. It's And it's really hard. It's yeah. very, very difficult to watch the team now. It's depressing. And yet, repeatedly, Sheffield Wednesday sat out there away following. Yeah. It, Almost everywhere. They did at yeah. Barnsley. I think they did. Uh, they did last night, yeah. And you mentioned the games you don't expect them to win, those two in the FA Cup, uh, Brighton and QPR. Also in this amazing, ridiculous spell, they've won at Leeds. Yeah, and again, we, we were fantastic against Leeds. So the, this so is unprofessional, isn't it, to be able to win word, that sort of game? And yeah, the word on the street is what we're talking to supporters and what the yeah. supporters believe, whether it's true, and I think it's the players that need to come and tell us it's not true, is that... They want, they want to put themselves in a the showcase. A lot of them are out of contract at the end of the season, so they're putting themselves in the self in the showcase when it's a big team. Um, they don't want to go and play for Barnsley's and people like that, so they don't care about games like that. But when they're just playing against Leeds United, they'll turn it on and really play hard. Um, they did when it's on TV, like they was at Queen's Park Rangers. They'll, they'll put the effort in because they're putting themselves in the short window when it comes to the game. The, the, the run of the mill games, they don't seem to be, they don't seem to be interested. What's your take on that, Colin? Uh, well, uh, the Championship is a really silly league. Yeah. Top beats bottom, bottom beats top all the time. Yeah. The, the actual, uh, the way that p players play, mm. uh, because you've seen them do so well, like they did at Leeds United, to win, and then they perform how they're supposed to have performed last night. That's the bit that people can't accept. Hmm. Uh, footballs do have bad times. I think it's the, somewhat me, people might perceive a lack of effort. The people that, because I heard somebody was saying early on that they're not fit to wear the shirt, that's always a shout. If fans, fans don't lightly chant that, that's the, that's the bottom yeah, line for yeah, them, isn't it? it, yeah. it, it's, it we try not to. I mean, I, I, don't, I personally don't boo, but at weekend at Barnsley, it was dreadful, and the but fans were started to turn on themselves, and that's the first sign of a club pulling apart. Yeah. The fans were actually fighting with each other in the middle of the stands during the second half, all over Cameron Dawson with the mistake he'd made. Yeah. Um, the, the, the supporters and, the, and, and it's toxic at the moment it's really toxic you've got people there who go every week we go with the lads never ever miss mm. and we're sat there and is it time to go yet what shall we do can we it's there's no entertainment we don't seem to be entertained there don't seem to be any passion from the players on the field whether they have got, obviously have got passion, but are they channeling it in the right direction? Uh, we don't know, but the, the fans are really, really disgruntled. Colin, in any job, people set their own standards. Um, and so, does it not make it worse if you can go to Leeds United and win? Yeah. And go to QPR and Brighton and win, and you're going to the two bottom teams and losing and drawing. Does that not make it... A bigger crime? It does. It, but but I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm sat here as an ex-player saying yeah. that, that I'm not sure that they do that on purpose. No, I'm not, no I don't no, think anybody's I, I saying but that. But what I will say is there is the, the subconscious thing about what's happening with the club. Is it, am I, am I going to get a contract or do they already know, we don't know this, that I'm not mm. going to get a contract next year? I don't know what, what's happening there. It's, it, it's only the players when they cross that white line they must have their own standards as well. It's not just for the supporters, it's about their own standards. And if they don't reach their own standards, then they should work that little bit harder to try and attain that. Because I'm not sure the people like Roger, if, if he knew that they were given everything that they got, I think they would be able to accept yes, that. Yes, I, I, I do. I think that's true of football supporters everywhere, really. Correct. If they can see the absolute maximum, if players aren't good enough giving their maximum, then so be it. But you don't feel that with the well, group, You do talked you? about Ollie, Ian, yeah. Ian Holloway. We played Bradford away at the weekend and the away support was 2,500. We've mm. had home games that we haven't had that crap. Mm. Yeah. That's the effect of the environment that we talked about being created and them, them players 
giving everything they can for the shirt, they might not be the best players in the world. But I think fans will accept that. Well, Roger's referred just now to, you know, one of the symptoms of a club not doing very well is fans turning on each other. Yeah. As the, about some blame him or him, others blame the manager. And where are people on Gary Monk? Because I personally have got sympathy for him up to, up to a point. You know, ultimately, one win in nine, as he admits freely, is just not good enough. And in the end, the results will always count. But he I hasn't had an opportunity. He he's cer certainly hasn't had the opportunity. And he's certainly he's been, he's inher he's inherited toxicity that's come back from the... On my level, it's the Carlos era was the... It was the catalyst that we... It was the springboard the first season. If things had been managed correctly after that first season, yeah. that club was going places. It really was going places. Everything was in place. We'd got the, the new owner. Um, he, he, he made a fantastic job. He, he tidied the ground up. He put things in place that were really... People were wanting to go to the club. I remember the first game after the Wembley match was against uh, Aston Villa and the people were standing in the aisles and they were jumping about and when Forestieri scored that goal um, in the last couple of minutes and we won 1-0, it was, you think, this is it, this is our season, this is where we're going to go. And we went to Norwich the following week and we drew 0-0 and Forestieri had had his up and downs and then people started then and that season we finished fourth but for me that was the start of yeah. when things went really started I to go wrong the, every squad needs changing and freshening and that one wasn't and in fact just it got flooded with lots of new players many of whom were you know proven to be in a, ineffective signings and nobody went through the door and I yeah. think that's what they're suffering from exactly now. and exactly yeah. that's where it all started from and now the nucleus of the team the mentality of the team is a team that not we're not quite good enough we haven't got there mm. so we'll just keep on bumbling along and we'll as long as we stop up this season mm. we'll be all right well, well let's hope they are all right because to me it's now about staying in the championship it certainly is especially yeah. if the point deduction yeah. comes up this is, to me, where the pressure is. Uh, and I, th I, I have some sympathy with the manager there because he's picked up the tab for two things. One of which, one of them is that he happens not to be Christopher John Wilder. Uh, there's only one Chris Wilder in football at the moment. And I think Gary Monk is a bit too close to comfort from him, really. Yeah. And that's not his fault. Uh, and the other one is that he inherited and came in when he had no knowledge of what might happen in terms of the AFL and the charges which could potentially bring a points deduction and if it was 10 points now they'd just be four points above the drop so wins are required aren't they yeah Got and extremely. wins are required fo 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 but uh, football manager always judge on wins now aren't they yeah nobody gets we talked before about uh, trying to develop young that's why we don't develop young players in our teams because you go win one in nine everybody's talking about you've got to go out the door yeah. So well, there's no way I'm going to brood any kids. No. It, it's the climate and it's wrong. And I think Sheffield Wednesday at the top have got to be strong personally at this, this time in terms of allowing this manager to make the changes and then judge him. And exactly. And the point is, you look at the bench and you look at the people that are there supporting him, it's the same faces that were there under Carlos. And they're sat there how much influence have they got on them players because I know working in, a, in an industry it's very easy for somebody to turn around and say well I don't like the new manager don't worry about it we, if we do X we can always sort things out and uh, is that going on well, at Hillsborough at the moment yeah, not, I don't know it, yeah it, I mean he's, it, Colin will know the inside of football far better than us so Gary Monk don't mean is, I'm going to tell you what I think <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's no, up to you. Yeah. But Gary Monk is working in a bit of isolation in terms of uh, the fact that he, he's come as manager where customarily managers would bring, bring their own, would bring their own assistants yeah, with them. So, but, but then it's a, it's a, it's a better man that, that has said, well, I'll come in and I'm, I want to take that job and I want it because he did play for him as well, didn't he? He came yeah, he did, yes, he, he did. did. And, 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 I think and at Grimsby Town, yeah. he played at Grimsby he, he, at one stage. Yeah. And, and, and what, he's, what he's saying is, I'm going to come and work with these, and we're going to try and get the best out of the players. Yeah. But 
I still think it's, it's a lot of it is about when the player crosses a white line, he can only shout and bark orders. Can't make the players run. No. And he can only make three subs. Yeah. Ah, well, it, it's, it, it'll be interesting to see what happens down there. And I mean, Carlton Palmer sat where you guys are last week and he, he, he said that he felt the club needed a new uh, football structure, i.e. the football expertise of somebody, mentioned Howard Wilkinson, but somebody, some, you know, possibly, but somebody of that type running alongside the manager, uh, making the decisions and on and off the field, really, yeah. on the football side, it, which I've, I've always felt was required. But I think the director, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. the director of football now yeah. is, is, is the way forward now. Yeah. Because yeah. of there's so many things happening with it. There's no managers anymore, they're head no. coaches. Yeah. They don't manage the football club anymore. There's too much to do. Yeah. And I think now they need somebody else in that boardroom that is working alongside them. A football person. Correct. Yeah, OK. Whether it will be Howard Wilkinson or not. It's somebody the, of that ill. Somebody uh, who's had it. We, what, when he first came in, uh, 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 Mr Chanziri first came into the club, he got himself a committee of experienced people in the football mm -hmm. industry who'd taken clubs up, knew what it needed to take a team out of the, the championship into the Premier League. That slowly or quickly or whatever disappeared and it didn't exist anymore. Mm. Uh, we then got Carlos in who did a magic job that first season. It was some of the best football I've seen. I really yeah. enjoyed it. First time I've enjoyed it for a long time. But then there's some very strange decisions that are being made. Well, he Why have the decisions been made like that? He was head coach, really, in the continental sense, and that pretty much he coached what, what he got. Um, but uh, in terms of the recruitment, something went, something went wrong there. And yeah. I think that's what needs, personally, needs to be rectified in the future, albeit that you know, I think any Sheffield Wednesday fan would accept that the owner of the club is very committed, wants it to oh, succeed, has yeah. invested hugely in it yeah. and no, deserves, hopefully, to see some reward. I don't that. think there's many people, certainly, and there's nobody turning around and saying that. I think he's been badly advised. Yes. I mean, seriously been badly advised. Yeah. Um, and whether he's been badly advised to this day, I do not know. Uh, he might need to look at the people he trusts in the football game because he's in, he's like in any walk alive if you keep making this and the same things keep happening are you yeah. doing the right things and so you need yeah. to take a step back lots of lots to think about there but um can i just take you back now uh we're going back back a long long way uh even for me uh 1970 right that, and, and in researching this show even though I'm, i i know colin and remember him playing it's always good to google you know uh i found i came across a, a news report um, that in 1970, a BBC news story dubbed Mr. Walker here, quotes, the most wanted junior player in Britain, and he was age 12 at the time. Correct. There was another headline with it. Better, Better than, than best at 12. <laughs> they, you remember Do you remember, do you remember yeah. Roger the Green? What, what went the, wrong? The local paper. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, 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 the Green, that, that, yeah, that, I remember the Green. That was the, yeah. that's where the headline came from. What, what went wrong, Colin? <laughs> <laughs> well, between the age of 12 and 16, yeah. I never grew. I stayed the same. <laughs> uh, and everybody else around me just shot up. And so I was at 14, 15, 16 trying to get a club. At 10, 11, 12, I could have had 18 clubs. I could have signed for Leeds. I could have signed for Manchester United. Uh, I don't know whether you read the story, but... Not all of it, I just... I'll, I'll just give you one. I went to meet the manager, who I think was Frank O'Farrell at the time, at, at, at Manchester United. United. Yeah. And uh, he's, giving, he's giving a player a roasting. So I'm sat outside. He, so he gives the player a roasting and tells him to go and wait in the corridor. And he, I go in and meet him with the chief scout that's taken me in. And he says, right, uh, we're going to go up to the cliff training ground. I've got you a lift. Your lift's outside, he's, he's ready to take you. And that guy was George Best. <laughs> so I go in the, up in the sea type jag. With uh, George Best? With George Best. Uh, we get up to the cliff ground, and there's lots of women outside, couldn't get into the ground. And I'm, and I'm stood there thinking, what, what, what is happening here? So we go inside to the cliff ground eventually. 
He went, right, I'll give you a lift. You go down to the boot room, get my boots. You know what you mind. And they were fur lined. We got his name inside them. They were fur lined. We go outside and we right, we're going to have a game. So we're playing a game. And this is how, this is how they look to uh, introduce players like me at that time. So I had a five-a-side team, and my five-a-side team was Bobby Charlton, Dennis Law, Georgie Best, Brian Kidd, and me for a first five-a-side, only for five minutes. Yeah. But that was a way of saying, this can happen all the time for you, Colin. Please tell me you finished on the winning side. I can't remember it again, but that was at 12. And at 16, I had nobody. I was playing local pub football. Couldn't well, get a game of football. What a story that is. What a, but doesn't that show the perils of clubs isolating and looking and saying, there's an 11-year-old there, he's going to be this and that? You can't tell, can you? Well, you can't, but you, you have growth. to. I mean, especially in Sheffield, where Sheffield United and Sheffield Wednesday are after the same kid. Yeah. Uh, now you've got Manchester City and Manchester United who are less than an hour over the, over the hill so they can come and take the best kids also. Yeah. So you, you, it, that, you have to make them types of decisions yeah. because somebody else will, will make that yeah. decision. But it's that, crazy. That rate Alan. of growth is so oh, it's unpredictable. Crazy. Oh, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. My, my own son, he, he was training at Barnsley Academy uh, when he was 12, 13 years of age and I, I thought he was going to be really good biased of course but he had a big growth spurt and the technical ability that he had he suddenly mm. became clumsy uh, and you know unfortunately the dream died there but that that's how I've seen it but, that, but that, that's that was 1970 yeah here we are in 2020 yeah and it's still the same thing Right. Now they've got academies, now they've got games of football up to 16. But the 16, they're still saying, I'm sorry. For most of them, they're saying, I'm sorry, you're not good enough. Mm. You're going to take the one and the two. Yeah. And at 12, it's, it's very difficult. Great for you to still be involved in football after all these years, Colin, and, you know, so travelled and so enjoyable your life at the moment with, with Ian Holloway. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think that's such a boost for the the football club and the fans oh, over there. It's, it's, uh, it's immense. He's, he's a breath of fresh air to football. Yeah. I mean, he's a box of frogs. He's, he's, <laughs> he's lively all the time, but, but, but a real top, top football person who yeah. it will only do good things at Grimsby Town. Yeah. He's uh, very intense as well. I've interviewed him a few times following matches, and uh, he is quite tense then. But I think I think he's probably a different uh, animal during dur during the week. Yeah, I mean, and One he's day. and he's brought his wife and his four dogs to live in Grimsby. They're not they're not he's not tr not commuting. He's he's whole hog. He's in it for that's, the long haul. That's a big uh, big big commitment. commitment. Yeah, and he likes the fish and chips as well, doesn't Apparently. he? Apparently. And he's found Steele's uh, Corner House fish and chip restaurant, which I have many times <laughs> I've enjoyed over the years. <laughs> yeah. And I really lament the fact that Grimsby are only in League Two, because I want them in the Championship, as they were at one time, they were. when I used to have frequent journeys <laughs> over to Cleethorpe's and Steele's Corner House. Well, it's been fantastic, and as usually happens when you have a good time, it's just disappeared. Uh, so we're about to close the show. About a, a big thank you to Roger Burkett and to Colin Walker. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. As ever, uh, this will be repeated here at 11 p.m. tonight, and it will be on my YouTube channel for anybody who's missed it. I'll be back with another show next week. Oh, no, in a fortnight. See you then. Bye.